Nicola, and it was a great mom and a terrific woman. Nicole Brown Simpson was a California beauty who would become Simpson's second wife. She was one of three Brown sisters born to an American father and German mother. In 1977, while working as a waitress in Los Angeles, the 18-year-old Nicole met O.J. Simpson. The stories abound about him seeing her and saying, I'm going to marry her. The football star swept her off her feet and into a luxurious Hollywood lifestyle. They were a gorgeous couple. People said that when they entered a room at a party or at a, a restaurant, people would stop talking and catch their breath because they were so beautiful together. In 1985, Simpson and Nicole were married. Soon after, they became the parents of Sidney and Justin. And they seemed to be the golden couple. It was as if nothing bad could ever happen to them. But then the worst happened. I never met Nicole. Um, describe her to me. Capable. Very, very, very capable. Um, um, uh, probably as bright as any girl I've ever dated. Um, 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 because she's European, you know, born in Europe, and I guess the flair with her mother, uh, uh, traditional woman, more so than a lot of Americans with the livers and all of that. Nicole was very, um, uh, for a man, she was a great, great girl to have. You know, she was, you could fight and she'd still cook your dinner. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, so whatever the, those traditional values that women bring to a relationship, she did not, didn't let her emotions um, affect those. As the years passed, Simpson began to reveal a violent side. In 1989, pictures surfaced of a beaten and bloody Nicole, and Simpson pleaded no contest to spousal abuse. Things got so bad with Simpson, Nicole filed for divorce in 1992 and tried to start a new life. She moved into a rented home on Gretna Greenway in Brentwood, Los Angeles. But Simpson wouldn't let go and began stalking her. On October 25, 1993, Nicole dialed 911 the call is chilling. What's the problem there? Well, my ex-husband just broke into my house, and he's ranting and raving. Now he's just walked out in the front yard. What does he look like? He's O.J. Simpson. I think you know his record. Could you just send somebody okay. over here? Give me an open attack. Oh, Give me a attack before this talk with DTA's on. Uh, okay, the kids are thinking. Do you think of Nicole at all anymore? Yeah. Yeah, I thought about it the other day. Uh, when it was her birthday, obviously. Um... Yeah, from time to time, and there's times I'm angry at her. <laughs> you know, Why? Times because when I feel that there's things that she could be doing with the kids better than I, you know, when if it's an emotional stuff, especially with my daughter, uh, I'm angry with her. I'm angry that sometimes that she she found herself hanging around with people. Who are these people? And it pisses me off every time I see the media say, oh, God, Cato, Kalen, these guys are friends. I don't know these people. And Cato will admit, he and I weren't friends. We didn't hang out together, you know? I don't know these, these people. I can count on my fingers the time I've seen Faye Rusnick. This is a group of nomads, I guess, that Nicole started hanging out with after we were divorced. John, you represent the estate of Nicole Brown Simpson. When you, when you listen to this, uh, what are your thoughts? You know, it's, uh, he's a... Uh very narcissistic person he's you know i can't believe there's so much hot air in one body he just if you ever watch him he's always shrugging and laughing and turning away because he even knows himself he's he's not talking the truth when he speaks uh i spent literally weeks with this man in a conference room when we were deposing him sat right next to him at the trial for four months and just you know just got more than my share of sort of what this man is about and it did, there's nothing good about it. He's a true definition of a sociopath. There you go. In, in every respect. The family seemed to uh, really like O.J. Simpson, obviously up until the time of the murder, but there were so many instances where he was abusing her. What, did they look the other way? Did they not know it? Well, I, I think they knew it, but uh, you know, if your adult daughter doesn't want you to meddle in her affairs or with her husband or ex-husband, as the case was at the end, uh, you just don't do it. I mean, every day you pick up the papers and you hear about the abuse. It was, uh, you know, sort of telling a story that this could have been expected, that this guy was violent, this guy was dangerous, and uh, nothing was done ahead of time. I don't think there was anything there that suggested ever that it could lead to 
a homicide like that. Dr. Powell, how savage was, I mean, this murder? I mean, there, there are all sorts of murders. You can just sort of do the one from 200 yards with a gun, and then you can have this kind. Yeah, her throat had been cut. Her throat was cut. She had two carotid arteries that were cut, which bleed out fast, so she would have lost consciousness uh, within 10, 20 seconds. One stroke of a, was one stroke? W uh, there were multiple strokes, but one big one across the neck, and then there's about six other stab wounds on the thing. So it was uh, a, a very vicious kind of uh, situation. However, people should remember the neck is about four or five inches in thickness. The bone, the cervical spine is more than half of that distance. So in this situation, even though the cut wound went down to the bone, that's about an inch or two, but it cuts through vital structures. And I think the image of somebody's head almost coming off as played up in different newspapers, is just a false image and can occurs whenever somebody's neck is cut. And that was, that was uh, serious. Goldman was stabbed about 20 times, and he put up a struggle. Ron Goldman was a waiter at a restaurant called Mezzaluna. He had seen Nicole when she'd been there. They'd become sort of friends. On the night of the murders, Nicole's mother had dropped her sunglasses at the restaurant. Ron, a handsome model and aspiring actor, offered to bring them to Nicole's condo. And that was how he wound up there, in the wrong place at the wrong time. Nicole was seated on the front steps, front doors open, lights on, gates open. She's expecting Ron Goldman. As a good Samaritan, totally, not as a as boyfriend, a Samaritan, right? Not good. as a boyfriend. He's bringing back Judith the Brown's glasses that were found at the Mezzaluna. Totally good Samaritan, though. There's sure. Okay. And she's outside. She's waiting outside, okay? I can't remember who they said uh, the prosecution theory was who died first, uh, but they were quite certain ab about it. And I, you know. They thought that Nicole was attacked first and would have lost consciousness as soon as a neck was cut. And, and uh, Goldman uh, was off a few feet away.